Okay, Austin, you sent me this video as part of the online video analysis um, of you hitting balls down here in Orlando. And I just put up Grant Waite over here um, on the opposite side of you, just as a little comparison. So you can see setup-wise, you were pretty close to the same. I think Grant's hitting like a 5 or 4 iron, and you were probably 7 or an 8 iron. Um, so that's why yours is going to be a little bit more upright than his. But a couple things that I want to look at here, you said you're kind of missing some of them left um, now, which I know is your miss from working with you in person. And you got a couple misses to the right going on too. So um, when we look at the five simple keys, um, we're probably looking at key number four and key number five, especially with good players. That's what we're going to kind of tend to focus on more than anything. Keys one, two, and three are typically always pretty good. Um, but keys four and five, which is sweet spot path, and club face control is kind of where we start getting off a little bit, and that's where our shots start traveling left or right or starting to curve too much. So um, what we want to look at here is if we just take it up to the top of your backswing, you can see your torso is turned very well inside your, your um, foundation wall. And then if we look at Grant Weight, when we get up to the top, same thing. He's turned very much inside. Um, his foundation wall just like you are. Um, look at your tush lines the same. Your right leg, left leg, everything looks the same. He maybe has a little bit more pressure going down through here um, than you, so he maybe is creating just a titch more speed. Um, but all in all, position-wise, everything looks pretty much the same, except for when we start looking at his length of the backswing. Like I said, he's probably hitting four or five iron, and that's the length of his golf swing, and then you can see how long yours is. Um, so this is where we want to start really talking about wrist positions and those types of things. So if we look at kind of Grant's um, hand position over here, we can see that uh, the back part of his glove, or at least part of the back side of his glove, yours, we can't. We almost can see the palm of that left hand and nothing of the right hand. So what Grant's doing is he's really putting his right wrist more into an extension and flexion position going back between his two and yours is more just a hinge. So we'll see that even more so if we go um, back to kind of this position at a three here, which is left arm parallel to the ground. If we go back to Grant's that same position. You can already see, you can kind of see how his right wrist is kind of churning and the palm's trying to, trying to face away from him. Almost like, it's going to feel like he's hooded a little bit, but he's really, really not. Um, his club face is a little bit more square. If those trees weren't right there, we probably could see some of the grooves. Yours has disappeared. We can't see any of your palms. We're seeing your knuckles um, and nothing on the back of your left left hand. So um, he's just getting his hands working a little bit more into uh, an extension flexion position between the two of them going the opposite direction um, where yours isn't. So what I'd like to see a little bit more out of you right here, and this is going to get a little bit more compression on the golf ball too, is at this point, and even earlier in the golf swing, you take it away from really good, but then kind of start feel like you're almost hooding it a little bit, kind of get that... Right, the left wrist starting to kind of bow away from you. Right wrist kind of the palm starting to face away from your body. Again, that club working out away from you. That's going to keep you from getting too long because you've just got all hinged. So we can really break down, let that club get heavy and long. Um, where when we get those other positions, we're not going to get that. So if we start working back down in the golf swing here. Kind of get the two cameras to the same spot. Boom, kind of similar spots here. Maybe go a little bit further. You can see how his club's a little bit flatter. Yours is a little bit more up. So that's kind of the over-the-top position. But it's all because of your your hands. You can still see, you know, we're still seeing your your kind of your knuckles, and you can see here he's really starting to bend back and kind of get those hands and like uh almost like a hockey like he's going to hit a little slap shot there so you just need to work on getting those hands in a little stronger position 
and that's going to help come on the plane. See, now you're trying to shallow it out. You can see how his is still hanging back there, going right down the forearm. Right down the forearm. Right there. So look at his hand positions right there. His left wrist really starts to look bowed. His right wrist is really starting to be bent back. Maybe a higher speed camera because yours kind of jumps all the way down to impact. Um, but once again, you can see your body lines are pretty close to what Grant's is. So your body's moving fine. You know, you maybe you can have your left shoulder pulling out just a little bit more. Um, but I think the reason why it doesn't is because that club's coming to kind of coming from the high outside position. So um, all in all, I mean, the body's moving fine. We just got to work on those hands a little bit. And you can see him here. This is another big position where you can see Grant really matches this up really good. So you can see how his right wrist has still really got a lot of angle in it. In fact, if we uh, draw that angle in there, I'm going to kind of go down the back side of that. And then down as far. So he's 144 degrees. So then if I do the same on yours. 136. So he's held that angle eight more degrees. So that's not saying he's de it in eight more degrees. He's just eight degrees more stable, pretty much. His left wrist is still kind of bowed. Yours is starting to cup a little bit. And then a lot of wrist hinged down. Where now you kind of will see he kind of keeps holding that and kind of gives it what I call the stop sign position. So you can see now he's here and Pretty much the back of his left wrist is pretty well flat. I mean, it's maybe got a little bit of cup of his palms facing the target where your palms are kind of facing the sky. Um, so you're kind of adding loft. Club face is going point and left a little bit more. Um, and he's just a little bit more stable. But once again, if we look at body-wise, you're pretty close to the same. So we just got to get on those wrist positions um, and hand positions a little bit better. So... I'll get you some uh, other videos and stuff from, from Grant and Joe Mayo and some of these guys that talked about wrist hinging and stuff. Um, so you can kind of read up on it and know more what we're talking about. But uh, all in all, body's moving great from where it's been. Um, let's just clean up that hand action a little bit and you'll be on your way to playing more good golf.